If you've never heard about Pal World, then you literally don't exist. This indie game came out of nowhere and dominated the sales charts on Steam in just the first week. The game that seemed like nothing but Pokemon with guns ended up being the talk of the internet with fans going crazy over it. And now we got the most hardcore Pokemon fans review bombing the game and unfortunately sending threats to the creators. Then there's also the talk about the use of AI and then some models that are really close to the Pokemon model. Like recently, I think they just found a model for a pal that's not actually in the game and it looks really similar to one of the new Mewtwo forms. Meanwhile, the people on Pal World side are saying that this game is miles ahead of anything that Game Freak has put out in the last 30 years, and I cannot disagree with them on that. Some people are even going to the lengths of commenting on every Pokemon and Nintendo tweet they can find just to gloat about Pal World. Today I want to talk about this because it's much more than just a discussion about Pokemon with guns. But keep in mind that this is still an early access game, so some of the points I have here may be different by the time you see this video. But with that being said, let's see what's going on with Power World. We start off creating our own character with a pretty decent amount of options to customize the hair, the eyes, and facial features. And if you really want to get weird with the body types, they do allow you to do that. Just like most other survival adventure games, we start off on this island with nothing but the rags on our backs entering into this place filled with cute and cuddly creatures called pals. Not even five minutes in and you'll be collecting materials to start crafting a workbench, creating a club and an axe, and throwing hands with any pal in sight. Now you should already know by now, but this game is brutal in the best way. The marketing was great showing off the fact that you can attack pals yourself and later shoot at them with guns and rocket launchers. This is the one feature that stands out the most and I'm glad the devs decided to play around with the formula like this. If you've ever played the game Ark, then you probably can tell that pal world is closer to that than it is the Pokemon. And even then, it's still closer to Digimon than it is Pokemon. As a matter of fact, if you take the gameplay of Ark and replace the dinosaurs with Pokemon, then you basically do get Power World. It's seen as a parody because of how ridiculous it sounds to be taking out these cute, cuddly looking pals with a crossbow. On top of the brutality, we have the ability to raise these monsters, give them food, teach them abilities, and of course, make them into servants. And it sounds hilarious to be putting these guys through all this hard work and making your own personal sweatshops. But it got me thinking about how useful pals actually are compared to the Pokemon in most of those games. If you start off catching the early Pokemon like Pidgey or Wurmple, by the time you end up getting past a few gems, those Pokemon end up in the box and never get touched again. But with Power World, I kept having a use for some of the first creatures I caught. Around 10 hours in, I needed some wool and totally forgot that I sold all my lamb balls. Because I thought to myself, I need some money, I have a ton of these things, and I don't need them anymore. So what I had to do is go back to the starting area and catch some more so I can have them on my ranch. In a Pokemon game, the most I'd do with something like a Bidoof is of course turn it into an HM sleeve. But who needs HM slaves when Pal World lets you have actual slaves? The gameplay loop in Pal World is something that you'll be familiar with if you've ever played games like Ark, Minecraft, or even Breath of the Wild. Your main goal is collecting materials, catching new pals, and building up your base. It's a pretty simple concept, but it can be a long grind to get to where you're comfortable. If all you expected was to grab a gun and just start blasting, you'll have to wait at least 10 hours before you can really get into that. But best believe, as soon as I got the makeshift handgun, I felt the power of God and anime on my side. The best way to fast track yourself to the explosives and machine guns is to start crafting your pal spheres and going to catch as many as you can. They give you a bonus for the first 10 pals you catch in every species, which is the best way to get your levels up. And these levels are pretty important since this is where you unlock the ability to craft things like workbenches, mining sites, and farms. If you're not someone who's very patient, you might get turned off from the pacing of things. When I first started, I had this odd feeling because all I wanted to do was get my hands on some powerful gear. You'll be forced to mine for materials, build your base, and catch pals for a while until you eventually get to a decent point. That's when you get things like clothing options, a shield, a glider, and some upgraded gear. And once I did get past that hump, things got so much more fun and I felt excited to go out and explore everything this place had to offer. One of those things mainly being pain. 
this game can really kick your ass if you're not ready for the challenges ahead of you. Go ahead and throw out a pal to fight another wild one and they ain't the only one about to catch an ass beating. These pals will fuck you up if you're not ready to face them. You learn that very early on as some of the first pals you encounter are these Mamorests that are level 33. Now I'm used to games like Xenoblade throwing you into these areas with monsters way above your level, but here it's just mean because you have to walk past these things knowing that you have no chance at beating them, but at the same time knowing that one day they will be yours for the taking. The very first boss tower you face is against a goth girl riding on a giant Pikachu. Or I guess his name is Grizzbolt or some shit. And I won't lie, it took me a good minute to run through this fight without a problem. Using a ground type for the elemental advantage was key, but also having good enough shields, armor, and weapons came in handy too. I took my time grinding out other areas and catching better pals, and I came back to demolish them in only a few minutes. Granted, that was like 13 hours into my playtime, which is a bit longer than I needed, but I felt better going in fully prepared. But I do still wish that things didn't take nearly as long to progress. The pals at your base do a ton of the hard work for you while you're out exploring. They'll mine for wood and stone, finish any build that you set up for them, and later on they'll be able to make eggs for you to hatch. It takes away so much of the extra grind, but I still had moments where I was too weak to fight some enemies. All I needed was more levels, more gear, more money, or more materials, and that's the consistent flow of things. The grind to a good spot, then moving into harder spaces that make you need to grind again. Not saying that's a bad thing of course, because that's just how these things go, but I won't lie and say I'd be having nearly as much fun without watching some tip and trick videos. Because for things like getting the right stats from breeding and finding the right mining areas, it can be a little bit tricky. But the best thing here has to be that extra level of freedom and exploration. Once I got access to a pal that I could fly around with on the map, nothing was off limits for me. I went out to fill out the map, find new pals, do some dungeons, and come back to check up on the base. And once you get a decent flow set up, everything starts to work perfectly. I got addicted to it so much that I would play it for a few hours, then stop and hop right back on not even 15 minutes later. Hell, I had access to it on Game Pass PC already, but ended up going back and buying it on Steam anyway. And that's mostly because the Game Pass version is behind on updates and it just kept crashing for me. Plus I had to try it out on Steam Deck 2, which isn't the most stable thing, but when it works, it works. And when it doesn't work, it just makes your Steam Deck crash, which is not fun. But whether it was on purpose or not, Pal World is clearly benefiting from looking like a clone of the Pokemon series. Even with the mature tones and the survival aesthetic, the main takeaway is that this is much closer to what a lot of Pokemon fans have been begging Game Freak to do for years. I made a video a while back talking about Pokemon Legends Arceus and how that was reaching so much closer to what people wanted to see. And at this point, a sequel to that game with some online co-op and some base building might be enough to satisfy fans for years on end. You know, as long as it doesn't look like garbage and run like garbage. But the reality is that it's crazy to think that some indie devs are producing a title that we've been dreaming of for decades. A title that a multi-billion dollar company could never deliver on no matter how much we begged them. Pal World should be seen as its own thing and yeah I do want to see the devs give this a good old spit shine when it gets out of early access. But for a game to come from left field and dominate the internet in only a few days is one hell of an accomplishment. Let me know what you guys think about Pal World in the comments. I know a ton of you probably already played it for yourself by now, but it's nice seeing those discussions popping up about it. Subscribe for more videos just like this one and I'll see you all in the next video.